Hey everyone, it's Matthew from Randolph and I'm here in the great outdoors in a park in Montreal to talk to you about our newest game, Seaside. It's a game uh, by Bahrain Bourgogne uh, that takes uh, about 15 to 20 minutes to play for one to five players uh, ages eight years and up. Now, why are we in a park? Because this game is, as it says on the box, water resistant, windproof, and all terrain. That's right, it can be played anywhere. Try playing it at the beach. Let us know how it works out for you. So, let me tell you how to set up a game of Seaside. You take the bag, you put it in front of you. That's the setup. If you're two players, I recommend taking, you know, two sort of handfuls of tiles and putting them aside. If you're, if you're uh, three players, you take one handful of tiles, put them aside, just mix things, mixes things up a little bit. And that's your setup. You're ready to play. Now, to understand how uh, Seaside works, there are two areas on the, uh, in the play area. There's the sea and there's your Seaside. The sea is in the middle of the table, your Seaside's in front of you. The aim of the game is to have a pile of tokens here on your Seaside that you're going to stack up. And then the person with the highest stack of tokens wins at the end. In the sea, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going into the sea by playing tokens on your Seaside to add to your Seaside. And that's how you're going to get your points. So, on your turn, you're going to rummage around inside, you're going to draw a tile from inside the, the, the bag, and you're going to choose. I'm going to play this side, or I'm gonna, am I going to play that side? You play that side, you go again. You put it in the sea. Now, why? Well, because there are different types of, uh, different types of tile that you have. You have um, tiles that have a little blue border here, okay? You have shells. You have isopods, a little uh, little sea insects, and you've also got crabs, right? That you can play in front of you, and they've all got that little blue border on them with a little arrow. You see the little arrow? What does the arrow mean? It means go again. So if you play a token into the middle of the table, you play again. You draw another uh, tile from the uh, from the bag, and you play it in front of you or into the sea. This one has two white sides on it, so it means I have to play it in front of myself. This side here is a beach, okay? You'll see that there's a beach on there and there's a little shell symbol there. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I play this onto my seaside in front of me, I can go into the sea and take a shell. I can take one shell because I have one beach. You take as many shells from the sea as you have beaches in front of you. So here, I would take one shell. Now let's imagine there's a whole pile of shells in the middle and I play a second beach in front of me. Well, that allows me to take up to two shells from the center of the table. All right, if I play, imagine, a third beach. What? This is like crazy. But there are only two shells in the middle of the table? Doesn't matter, I take them anyway. Why? Because I wanna have the most tokens on my seaside as possible. Remember what I just said? Person with the most tokens wins the game. The other thing, uh, other uh, things that you can play onto your beach are the sandpiper, okay? Sandpiper is a bird that hangs around on beaches and does what? Eats insects, all right? So let's say that we have three of these isopods, these insects in the middle of our sea, in the middle of the table, okay? If I decide to play my sandpiper, I put him down in front of me and he can eat all or some of the isopods in the sea. You do that, you create what's called a sandpiper stack. And that means I've got a sandpiper here that's eaten three bugs, three isopods out of the sea. Now, let's imagine that there are three more in the middle of the table. Well, if I take another sandpiper, I can go and take those three there. And the key with the sandpipers, and this is the tricky part, is that they have to be, that the, the, the sandpiper stacks have to be the same size, okay? If, for instance, I had, uh, uh, let's imagine I had two here, right? Let's imagine I had a sandpiper stack of two and these are all in the middle. I take my sandpiper. If I was to take all of these isopods here and put them there, my stacks are unequal. That means I have to lose my smaller stack and that's out of the game. So what you want to do is you want to try to make sure that you take uh, a good amount so that you can repeat it later on or just take one sandpiper stack that's about this tall and you'll be fine. The next thing that we can play in front of us is a rock, okay? These are little uh, piles of rocks. Now, who likes piles of rocks? 
I'll tell you who likes piles of rocks. Crabs. Crabs love little piles of rocks. But one thing that a crab loves even more than a pile of rocks is two piles of rocks. If you draw a second pile of rocks out of the bag and place it in front of you, you are allowed to take... Ah, we'll ignore that. You can take all of the crabs from the sea and put them in front of you. And not only that, you can take a crab from one other player and add it to your stack so you can steal crabs after having built your little crab habitat in front of you. If you want to get more crabs out of the sea, well, you're going to have to build a second pile of two rocks in front of you in order to get more crabs. We've got airplanes flying overhead. It doesn't matter. Nothing stops us from playing uh, seaside. It just keeps going. The last thing we want to talk about is waves. All right. If you draw a wave out of the out of the bag and you decide to play it, you can see there there's a little symbol. What does that mean? That means that when you play your wave, you are allowed to flip one of your beaches in front of you. So you can look, you can look and see what's on the other side. I got all kinds of options here. What am I going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip over a wave. And now what do I do? I do the same action again because it's a wave and I'll flip over another one. Well, this one's a crab. I'm going to throw that into the middle. And because I've just thrown it into the middle, it has the little arrow on it. I get to play again, get to draw another, ah, it's another crab. I'm on my way to building up an entire crab empire that I can get by picking up some rocks if one of my opponents doesn't get it first. All you need to do now is tally up your score, but there's one more thing you can do. The person who has the most waves on their seaside gets to take all of the remaining tiles from the center of the table, from the sea, and take it, doesn't matter what they are, and put it and add it to their seaside. And now what am I doing? I'm stacking up all of the tiles on my seaside. Look at this. That's a pretty good stack. If this stack is bigger than your stack, I win. But if yours is bigger, you've got the game. And that's how you play seaside. See you at the beach.